Welcome to the show. Racing is set to go ahead at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Wednesday, the 26th of April. An eight-race card, the first off at 12.30. Following the heavy rain over the weekend, which saw the abandonment of the weekend racing at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, the sun has come out. I had a chat to Cape Racing Executive Justin for Mark, and it's all systems go for this Wednesday's race meeting. The first event is a maiden juvenile plate for fillies over 1,000 metres. Being an eight-race card, it is the first leg of the bipot. Number three, Musical Arts, the early short-priced favourite at 11 to 10, with numbers four, Strata, and five, Nile Le Boss, at five to one. They're betting 10 to one and better, bar the top three of the early betting exchanges. A number of very well-bred first-timers, number two, Kai Thera, fits that bill, as does number eight, Future Star, number nine, Montalina, two-year-old daughter of the United States. The trainer reports that she's very speedy and expecting a good run. And then, of course, also the Brett Crawford train, number 10, Born Ready. Those are the first-timers, but Musical Arts Strata and Nile the Boss all have shown promise. Musical Arts uh, caught the eye when running second at Hollywood Bets Durbanville behind Unconquerable Lady a couple of weeks ago, and she is the favourite, as mentioned. Nile the Boss, an interesting runner from the Adam Marcus stable. Keegan DeMello takes the ride, has had two starts third on debut behind Easy Money, and then a rather distant fourth behind Double Grand Slam over 12.50 in her next start. But interestingly, she was only half a length behind Quick Trip on that occasion. And Quick Trip came out and ran a very, very good race behind uh, Distant Winter next time out, and Quick Trip is a firm favorite to win the second. So I'm leaning towards number five, Nile the Boss. I think five to one offers good value, healthy respect, of course, for number three, Musical Arts. Daughter of Oratoria showed plenty of ability first time up. And then number four, Strata has had three starts, so she's quite experienced, has run fourth, fifth, and third, and is therefore an obvious contender for the minor money. As far as the bipod is concerned, to play it safe, I guess you've got to go with numbers three, Musical Arts, and five, Nile the Boss. But I fancy Nile the Boss looks good each way value at around five to one. The second race is another maiden juvenile plate for fillies over 1,000 metres. This race off at 13.05 is the first leg of the place accumulator. And again, a number of very well-bred first-timers. The very short-priced favourite is number 11, Quick Trip. She's at 11 to 10 in the early betting exchanges, ran third behind Double Grand Slam on debut, and then a very, very good second behind Distant Winter last time out. Distant Winter was backed into 4 to 10, to win that race on the 11th of April. She was pressed all the way to the line by number 11, Quick Trip, who showed fine natural gait speed. The third horse on that occasion was many lengths behind them. So Quick Trip does look very tough to beat. If any of these first timers are gonna overturn Quick Trip, they're gonna to have to be very good. Number three, Baltic Secret, represents a Richard Faree, Justin Snaith combination. That's been priced up at seven to one, a very well-bred daughter of Karari. There's some early money around, for the Adam Marcus trade, number four, Royal Lytham, a two-year-old daughter of Lancaster Bomber, Elder de Mayer takes the ride. And I mentioned before, you always got to take note when Elder de Mayer rides for Adam Marcus, they have a very healthy strike rate as a team. And then Candice Bass Robinson sends out number eight, Beach Bomb, who's by Lancaster Bomber out of that great race mare, Beach Beauty. Craig Zaki rides for Candice Bass Robinson. The jockey arrangements would suggest that Elder de Mayer prefers the chances of number four, Royal Lytham, on this occasion. But they're going to have to go some to beat number 11, Quick Trip. She's a confident first choice and a ready-made bipod and place accumulator banker. Eight race cards, so race three, a maiden juvenile plate over 1,000 metres over 1340 is the first leg of the pick six. Of course, the unraced rule comes into effect with the first leg of the pick six. You can ignore the first timers and concentrate solely on those that have run previously. And of those that have run previously, the one to beat is the early favourite, number seven, Captain Arrow, who's had four starts, runner-up in its last two starts. And Candice Bass Robinson has always held the son of captain of all in high regard. Elder de Mayo takes the ride aboard number seven, Captain Arrow. But if you go back in the collateral form lines, there's not much to choose between numbers five, Silver Crown, who's easy to back at eight to one, and Captain Arrow tops the boards at five to two. Interesting runner for me is number one, Bohemian Grove. Showed plenty of ability first time out, went fourth to the very useful Golden Tatiana, and then raced in a couple of feature races against winners and failed to flatter behind Reskova and Winter Cloud. Steps back to the minimum trip of 1,000 metres. 
drawn in Gate 1, Bohemian Grove, is open to a huge amount of improvement. Also remember, the going is going to be on the soft side. So a number of horses have been looking for a kinder ground, kinder going, are going to improve, and that holds true for all horses throughout the card. The first timer that is of particular interest, if you want to hedge your bets and include a first timer in your pick six, number 13, Gravity. Richard Faree and Justin Snaith, races in the colours of Greg Bortz, two-year-old son of Kerari out of Earth's orbit, and he's therefore a half-brother to the computer form sprint entry, Taken Out, and the very decent feature race winner, Mercury Rising. And what's of particular interest is that Greg Bortz bought the half-brother at the National Yelling Sales over the weekend. So Gravity, who's been backed in from 11 to 2 to 9 to 2 in the early exchanges, is clearly one that can run. But from a pick six point of view, we can ignore gravity, not from a place accumulator or bipod point of view, but Captain Arrow, with his experience and two good seconds behind his name in his last two starts, does rate the one they all have to beat. Gravity may yet turn out to be his biggest danger. Now racing gets interesting. Races four, five, six, seven, and eight. They're all handicaps. Some of them have got quite small fields, but they're not easy. They are a real challenge. And uh, no exception is race four, the first leg of the first jackpot, the Cape Turf Club A stakes over 2,000 metres. Only six carded, four of them from the Justin Snaith stable. Glenn Cotton sends out the ever consistent number two Han Solo and Andre Nell, Master Redoubt. Now, interestingly, Han Solo, Navy Strength, Master Redoubt, and Somerset Morm all race behind Baratheon at Hollywood Bets Durbanville on the 28th of May, and you could throw a blanket over them then, and you might well be able to throw a blanket over them this time around. But of course, this is not Hollywood Bets Durbanville. It's a far more galloping track, the Hollywood Bets Kettleworth circuit. And the going on that day on the 28th of March was firm and fast, and now all of these horses encounter a soft track, which could see some of them really improving on their recent efforts. The favourite is number five, Silver Darling, last season's Lavington winner. Richard Faree takes the ride, which may suggest that she is a stable elect, and with Justin Snaith dominating the race, that could be a real value pointer. But she is the only filly racing against uh, five male rivals in this six-horse party. They all have a chance. Navy Strength is second favourite at 33 to 10. Han Solo is at 9 to 2. Silver Host is one that's possibly least fancied in the sense that he would prefer more ground, but you can't uh, write off his chances entirely, and he also has 61 and a half kilos to carry, so giving weight all round. Somerset Morm, always there and thereabouts, and Master Redoubt doesn't know what it is to run a bad race, and he's been very consistent in his last three starts as Master Redoubt. Silver Darling, the riding arrangement suggests that she may be the stable elect, but we've seen in recent times that Richard Free is not always on the right one. Grand for Nikit, may strike it lucky with Navy strength. My real recommendation here is that you don't try and split the six horses. You throw them all in to your jackpot and pick six permutations. It's very hard. The pace is going to be a critical factor. There's six of them. They may go ridiculously slowly or they may go surprisingly quick. The going is on the soft side. The first time that these horses have encountered soft going for, for many, many months now. And that could uh, also cause a number of them to improve markedly on their recent showings. So I suggest the field, although if pressed for selection, I would go with Silver Darling. Race five is another tricky handicap. It's a class three handicap for Phillies and Mares over 1,100 metres. And here we only have seven runners. And uh, again, it's wide open. They're betting 33 to 10 the field. The favourite is number one, Pacific Green. Once again, Richard Faree and Justin Snaith. At 15 to four, interesting runner, number three, Who Do You Love? Very talented, very good daughter of Rafif. Hasn't raced since the 28th of January when she ran third behind going up over 1,400 metres. Elder de has got a good book of rides. He takes the ride for the Candace Bass Robinson stable here. What a state. They don't come more consistent than her. She's in pretty good form, having won two of her last three starts. Hunting trip, always there and thereabouts. Allende showed uh, great improvement last time when close up behind Wall Estate. That was around the corner at Hollywood Bets Durbanville, and maybe that's a trick. Maybe this daughter of Dynasty now prefers going around the turn rather than down the straight. And you cannot ignore uh, Body Electric because uh, she goes really well sh for Sean Veal. He's ridden her three times for two wins and a third. So here again, you try and nail your colours to the mast at your own peril. I know I can't go field in every leg, but I think we can narrow down the first leg of the pick six. I've suggested you take the field in the second leg of the pick six 
And again, with this seven-horse lineup, I'm suggesting you take the field in the third leg. But my selection would be first number three, who do you love, to come home ahead of Water State, Pacific Green, and Hunting Trip. But they're all very much alive. Race six in the card is a class five handicap over 1,400 metres, and it's off at 15.35, the first leg of the final pick three. Now we can't go field at every leg, and this is a low-grade handicap, but I'm going to nail my colours to the last year, and I'm not the only one. Brandon Gayard has made, like the clappers, his nap for the day, and I'm going to do the same. He's always been well-regarded, this four-year-old son of Pomodoro. He's likely raced. He's only had six career starts. He had his first run after a rest, a long rest at Gelding um, at Hollywood Bets Durbanville on the 25th of March when running fifth behind Seeking Peace. He then stepped up on the 11th of April to run second to the impressive winner Slurry Kane. And uh, this will be his third run after rest, third run after Gelding. Richard Vary writes for Justin Snaith that drawn in gate seven, should appreciate the sting out of the ground, has run on this type of going before, has been priced up favourite 22 to 10. You've got to, you've got to structure your bets uh, as you see best, as you see fit. And having gone wide in races four and five, I'm happy to take my chances and banker number seven, like the clappers, in the sixth race. So what are the dangers? Well, there are many, and that's the point. If you go beyond like the clappers, then you've got to go pretty much very wide, which is what I'm trying not to do in this race. Number one, Veronique is drawn in pole position. She goes well over the trip and is in pretty good form. Paper trail, that is one that is going to enjoy the sting out of the ground. He's reserved his best efforts always for Hollywood Bets Durbanville, but it was a good effort behind Slurry Kane last time. He was narrowly behind Like the Clappers. But given that Like the Clappers is on an upward curve, I do think that Like the Clappers will confirm the form with paper trail. Fly to Rio, seldom puts a foot wrong, and Captive Moon found betting support last time, but was well beaten in behind like the clappers and paper trail, and there's no reason other than the change in the going to suspect that Captive Moon is going to turn over number seven like the clappers. So number seven like the clappers, one of the better bets on the card for me, and if you're searching on a difficult card with many handicaps for a jackpot and a pick six banker, then my recommendation would be number seven like the clappers in race six. Race seven is a class four sprint over 1,200 metres, and again, it's a smallish field, but uh, 10 will face up the starter. Uh, they're betting four to one the field, which tells its own story. Elder de Mayo teams up uh, for Candace Bass Robinson on number 10. Benjamin, who is the weak early favourite at four to one. One Gimme's Laddies at nine to two, along with number four, Kimball O'Hara at nine to two. Then we go out to number two, Swift Action, a recent winner at 11 to two. Five Dance Variety is at six to one. Number three, Winter Pearl is eight to one. Number seven, Axel is eight to one. Those are the ones quoted in single figures. Not an easy race, very competitive sprint. And here again, you've got to go wide. So you've got to go light in race three, the opening leg of the pick six. I'm suggesting you go light in race six, which is the fourth leg. And here you need a bit of cover. I do like the chances of uh, Gimme's Laddie and Swift Action, as well as Dance Variety. I think Kimball O'Hara might struggle against them in this race. He was well beaten at Hollywood Bets. Durbanville first up as a gilding behind Seeking Peace. And uh, perhaps, again, a uh, better form at Hollywood Bets Durbanville, but has won at this track and has won in the wet. So you can't entirely ignore the chances of number four, Kimball O'Hara, one for the shortlist, or not so shortlist in this race. And number 10, Benjamin. He's not the most reliable, and he tends to get into the race when it's all over, but you've got to throw him in. So you've got to include at least all of numbers, one, Gimme's Laddie, two, Swift Action, four, Kimball O'Hara, five, Dance Variety, and number 10, Benjamin. But if you're going to include that many, then this is another race where you might like to consider the entire field. It's not impossible to go fields uh, in, in the second leg where it's a six-horse race, field in the third leg where it's a seven-horse race, and field in this race going light in the first and fourth legs. And perhaps moving on to the eighth and final race, which is a class three handicap over 1,200 metres, perhaps we can narrow this one down to a few runners. I think number two, Bierenberg, is going to love the change in the going and deserves a victory. Very game, very consistency. Put back-to-back uh, -back wins together towards the end of last season. Has been there and thereabouts consistently in recent times and loves the going to be on the softer side. Has had three runs in softer going for two seconds and a third. So I think Bierenberg does set the standard. But you can't ignore Wyag, you can't ignore Felskun, you can't ignore Tchaikovsky and Transact. 
Those appear to be the pick of this field, but watch out for a much better run from number six street outlaw. We know that the three-year-old son of master of my fate, trained by Ricky Maingard, has tons of abilities. He showed early in his career when beating Weir Jamming and running fourth to Dave the King. He's been out of sorts in recent runs, but given the change in the going, it'd be no surprise to see number six street outlaw coming home uh, much better than he has in his recent outings. But number two, Bierenberg, that gets the vote as far as I'm concerned, but it is another competitive class three handicap over 1,200 metres. So those are the eight races. The first three are maiden juvenile races, and those are the ones where perhaps we can narrow down the, the list of potential winners, but races four through eight are all handicaps, not big fields, change of going, tricky conditions. Some of these horses that have been waiting for winter to come around are gonna throw an extra leg on a softer track, and uh, so good luck. Like the Clappers, maybe the best of the handicap races.